Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter, the master of hoppets. Today looking at another beer that I got from Biotech in Bamberg, a bottle shop down in Bamberg, part of a chain of bottle shops called Biotech around Germany. And uh, they, I think they have a web shop online as well, but so far they only ship to Germany. But it's a place if you're in Germany to look out for German craft beers. Big thanks to Enzo and Mikkel who made this happen. And this is one of the beers I've left. I still have a good amount of beer left, but all of a sudden a lot of other stuff came around and I was just some of the beers, box, uh, beers in the box. So I was like, they can sit for a bit. So they got to sit a bit uh, until, you know, now, because I cra I'm cracking another one. And I've actually been told by Mikkel that they were preparing another box for me as well with uh, some more vintage Rauchbier, which is going to be really fun to try. I still have yet to find a day to crack, like, because right now I have, like I said, like five or six different vintages of Echtenkerle Eiche, and it's like 8%. You need to be in half liter bottles. You need to be a few people to drink them, but most of my beer geek friends, they're not th that big fans of Rauchbier. I have a couple who really enjoy them. It's just getting them together, but we'll get it eventually, or get there eventually. So we're checking out a German craft beer from a, I guess, newer brewery. There's, you know, the craft brewer renaissance, craft beer renaissance, whatever. It's, it seems like it's been a little bit slower in Germany, mainly because they've had, they have such a strong beer culture there already. So think of all your great lagers and, and bucks and wheat beers and whatnot, even like, you know, your Goes and Berliner Weisse, even though I will say those styles have been elevated a bit or at least changed a lot by modern microbreweries. But it seems like they're getting along, like they're, they're catching up right now. Like think of Wurst Viacek in Germany or Frau Huba. Those are just some, some beer, beers. Blechbrot also, what I've had so far has been quite nice. So there, there's definitely something happening, which is great to see because a lot of the stuff I had prior, because Jens, Jens, I can't remember his last name, but a subscriber of mine who followed me back in the day would send German craft beer as well. And I remember it's like, it was like, it was nice, but it wasn't like, it, it, they haven't come as far as we had in like Denmark. And it seems like that's changing now. So done with that ramble, let's check out the beer. So this is from Tesveto, but apparently the brewery that makes these beers are called Hopfrei, no, Hopferei Her Herzrich, Hopferei Herzrich. Um, and they're based in Feucht in Germany, wherever that is. And this is their Schokobär Stout. So this is apparently a collaboration beer they made with Brew 52 in the UK, but this is the German brewed version. And this is a 6.5% oatmeal stout. So it's got oats, it's also got yeast. Uh, yeast, sorry, oats and yeast. It's also got wheat and I think rye? No, that's malted barley. Let's see here. No, malted barley and the malt are Munich, Vienna, caramel and roasted barley. And then they have wheat malt, uh, flaked barley, there we go, and flaked oats. There we go, two flaked ingredients. There. Uh, trust trying to translate the German. Stuff on here, the hops are Willamette Halatau Mittelfuy, and then of course also some yeast. It's supposed to taste like chocolate and espresso. It's black and it's great with vanilla ice cream and cooking. And then that's with a lot of German beers and also I think some British ones. It has like ratings of bitterness and malt flavor and whatnot. So it'll be fun to try. It's been a while since I had like a plain, plain like oatmeal stout type thing, 6.5%. So it's called Choco Bear, which means chocolate bear, but it just it's not made with any chocolate. As far as I know, uh, it doesn't state so in the bottle, so probably not. But yeah, it's interesting though, because I think according to the Reinheitsgebot, you can't brew with like oats, like oat, right? So why didn't they chuck in chocolate to chocolate bear? Coca nibs. I'm not entirely sure. It also doesn't say brewed according to the Reinheitsgebot anywhere in the bottle. But hey, let's check it out. So pour is a blackish color. It's like a really, really dark brown. And in the bottom of the glass, you really see loads of brown notes. Head on there is beige and beige and tan looking. Yeah, well, looks like a pretty classic stout. Let's check out the aroma. Very classic stout. It just smells pretty nice. I had my doubts with this one because I, I, for some reason, I don't know, the label and everything doesn't appeal to me. It's like, it says it's one. That's also one of the things I've become so critical of when I see awards and beers. Like it says it won platinum and gold at the 17 and 16 International Craft Beer Awards. Hmm. It's, it's, that's a thing, and it's, it's happened the same with wine and spirits, and there's so many competitions. And a lot of the competitions are like, pretty much just sending in beers, you're gonna get an award. It's like you pay to send in beers and you'll get some kind of award. Like you have to be really critical, but it's something that sells, it's great to have on your social media, on your bottles and whatnot. It's kind of like, even like some of the shitty mass produced uh, Danish macro crap lagers by some breweries, they have like these small like badges on the bottom, like on the neck that says like uh, uh, 
critically acclaimed and then like a date but it, there's that's it <laughs> no one reads into that of course but it, that's what it reminded me of to be honest but i think you really have to think critically when you, now i'm rambling i've been rambling so much in the reviews lately sorry guys but you really have to be critic with these awards because you need to look into how people get the awards there's like some main award show, shows or beer awards that's like great to follow like european beer star world beer cup those are like some of the prime examples of uh you know great awards for beer that's really you know if you win an award and that you're doing pretty fucking good but then there's all these other things I, there's a i'm not going to mention the brewery name but there's a danish brewery who's been really doing that when he was running his well his previous brewery now he's running another thing danish viewers know who he is but uh, this is it's it's koispo <laughs> Uh, he's been doing a lot of this award stuff, and I think one of the, uh, like, he's, yeah, I don't know, some of the stuff, like, his new website and everything, he's just nuts saying, like, how he got his scars on the street or some shit being a cop, and now he's, you know, he's been molded and transformed, and now he's making great beer. It's like the weirdest marketing story, but he's making beers, he's made a couple right now, but it's just, I haven't tried any of them. The old stuff, he did have a couple that were decent, but most of those, like, mm, yeah, it's okay, but he, he got so many fucking awards. By participating in every fucking competition. And that got him so many followers and so much critical acclaim, or acclaim on social media that people drank his beer, which was interesting. But somehow he still went bankrupt with his old company. Um, but I don't know. I don't think that had something to do with it. It was something with the takeover of a new owner and some different things. But he's been an notorious so that. I think one of the awards, a Danish beer blogger researched stopped, stopped, uh, and researched that he... Was like he won the award for best Danish brewery in a competition in New York. He was the only Danish brewery participating in the award ceremony. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, you really have to be critical. But with all that shit out of the way, I've been rambling for seven minutes without trying the beer. Let's try the fucking beer. It smells nice though. I mean, it's oaty. It's toasty. It's it reminds me of like a classic oatmeal stout, like toasty oaty, chocolate esque, maybe coconibby from roasted malt. But it has the sweetness of oats, which is very nice. Yeah, so maybe some dark fruity notes underneath as well. Toasty, nutty notes. It smells like a classic oatmeal stout. Let's try it. Cheers, and thanks a ton to Beauty, especially Enzo and Migu, for the beer. Hmm. Better than I expected. Nothing mind-blowing, but not a half-bad oatmeal stout. Very classic, very traditional. I will say though, for 6.5%, I could have used a bit more mouthfeel for an oatmeal stout. It's definitely got a little bit of lushness to it, but it's also got some dryness and it's dries out. Make and it's also it makes it it's like almost like lightly watery. And I don't know if they do water treatment and stuff like this on it as well to get it super lush or whatever. That's often what brewers will do. That's what I do, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's a nice oatmeal stout. I, I'll say that. It's Oaty, sweet, almost vanilla notes, uh, toasty, roasty, burnt bread, nutty notes, toasted nuts. I will not say it does not taste like super chocolatey at all. It has like coca nibby. If you've ever smelled coca nibs, it's that kind of chocolate wine it's without the bitterness. It does have a little bit of bitterness, but it's nothing crazy. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, pretty classic oatmeal stout. Um... It's not the best, like, one of the bench, if you want to try, like, one of the benchmark oatmeal stouts, if we're talking classic beer, Samuel Smith oatmeal stout, that's great. I'm getting vibes because of the oat flavor, but I don't think it's, like, as good. Also, a little bit of dark fruit on it as well, and then, like, a slight burnt on, note on the aftertaste. But, hey, it's a decent, um, like, oatmeal stout with wheat as well and flake barley. But it's nothing mind-blowing. And it's kind of like what the, like, I had an idea because of the, all the... Fucking awards and everything was like, oh, this is gonna be one of those that are gonna be like this. Oh, we won all of these awards and then the beer's just gonna be shit. But it's okay, it's decent. It's nothing that's gonna rock your world, but it's definitely like if I was at a bar and this was served to me, I'd drink it. It's not something I'd seek out, but hey, it's 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 worth a shot if you happen to come across it. Let's say it like that. So rating wise, I've gotta be brutally honest, guys, that's how it is. So rating wise for the Vito or uh, what was it? Hopfalei Herzlich. Choco bear, choco stout. Uh, 
like an 82, 83, early 80s, it's a decent oatmeal stock. Worth a shot if you come across it, as I said, but nothing I'd seek out. So if you had a chance to try guide, let, guys, let me know what you thought of it. Thanks a ton to Beauty in Bamba, specifically Midland Inso for this one. And stay tuned for more German craft beer, especially the Alf beers. I've been, I have a few, <laughs> which is going to be fun. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm going to say cheers and see you guys in the beer review.